Good morning, everybody. So good for you to join me. It's um, Dale from Erndale's. I hope everybody's doing well. It's been quite a while since I've been on here. I've had um, a nice long break, I think, from everything. I've been busy doing a lot of crafts and things like that. I'm staying healthy and I hope everybody else is too. So far, uh, so good. We just got to keep on going here. So I thought I would, first of all, welcome um, and my new subscribers. My subscriber count has gone up pretty significantly in the last month and, and I don't know what I've done to deserve that, but I'm very thankful for everybody who comes and checks in and watches my videos. Um, if you are new to my channel, my videos are a mishmash of a lot of different things. I do some crafting, cross stitch, knitting, crocheting, oh, all kinds of different things, bookmaking, uh, journaling, a little bit of quilting, and a lot of gardening. So for the winter time, the winter months from like October until March, you're going to see me in this environment and then after May hits, I'm outside and <clears throat> I pretty much do very little crocheting and knitting and any other kind of crafting after summer or f spring hits because I'm, my passion is my garden and that's where I like to be. We here in Canada, we have a very limited growing season and so I think we all kind of tend to, if we're gardeners or outdoor people, we all tend to get as much outdoor time as we possibly can uh, once spring comes. So if you're into gardening or you just like to be outside and see different things, uh, please join me in the summertime as well, because uh, we've been in this on this property for, well, we'll be coming up to six years in May. And um, we have made... Um, massive amount of changes outside in the yards so and that's going to continue i when we first bought this property it was just um plain grass big big garden in the middle of it like a vegetable plot and over the years we've done some tweaking and last year i really started to change um the the whole the whole yard and so i've cut the big vegetable garden in half and I've made a lot of perennial beds and I'm making some winding paths and some archways and and I'm really kind of um, making it more to my style. I love the English country garden style of wild and rioting flowers blooming everywhere. We've also added a lot of fruit trees and things like that. So um, that's going to continue this year. We're going to build some raised beds and um, I'm excited for spring to come. In fact, I have been pouring through my my seed catalogs. Um, they came in November. And this is what I've been doing in my spare time. When I have spare time, I've been sitting and going through them and putting down an order because, um, again, because of our short growing season, uh, we put our orders in in February so that if we are starting our seeds indoors, we have to start them fairly early. So um, my seed order will be going in next month, early next month before the 14th. So that's enough about gardening. That's coming up in May. Can't wait. But I have been very busy in the studio here and um, mostly working on that piece back there. I made a video last week just about that piece. Um, it's a baby quilt, crib cover quilt kind of thing, kit that I bought in 2019. And I started it in 2019 for a baby. And then of course I worked on it eh, kind of sporadically. And then last summer didn't work on it at all. Again, like I said, um, I don't do that kind of thing in the summertime. So it sat there and then I picked it up again in November and I've been really working on it pretty much exclusively uh, since Christmas. I want to get it completely finished by the end of January. That's my goal. And um, this cat here, he's just about done. He's the biggest part. And I spent all week last week 
working on that. So I don't have that much more. I just got a little bit along the bottom to do. And there's a little piece up there that has to be done. And then just a little bit of finishing at the top. So I think I'm on track to get that done for the end of January. And then I have to um, get a backing for it. And I think I'm, I've been kind of toying with what am I going to do? How am I going to finish it? And I think what I'm going to do is square it off. It's sort of got rounded edges. And I think I'm going to square it off and put a really wide border of black and white check all the way around it and then back it with the same kind of fabric. That's sort of my intention. However, all our fabric stores and craft stores and all that kind of thing have been closed for, um, well, since October pretty much. And so we just opened, uh, the government just opened up our shopping for um, any kind of shopping instead of only essentials. Uh, yesterday so I'm hoping that the fabric store that I go to is going to open up it's a very small little um, quilt shop that is in a tiny little town and he's very independent so I don't know I have to phone him and find out might have to make an appointment to go in he's it is such a small place that he doesn't like to have a bunch of people in there so I'm going to do that tomorrow and hopefully I can go and and get the material that I need to finish that once and for all and get it to the little boy whose room it's going into. He's already, he turned one in September, so he will enjoy it, I hope. And the reason that I want to put the border around it is he's not a baby baby anymore. He's he's getting to the little boy stage now. So um, I think it will look a little bit more childlike instead of baby-like if I do something different with it. So that's the intention for that piece. And other than that, I've been doing a little bit of knitting. I did a Christmas, or was it a New Year's? I can't remember. Um, cast on of a pair of socks. And they were going great. Absolutely great. I have one done. These are the Smorgasbord, uh, Cynthia's Smorgasbord socks by... Cynthia Wise was the, the designer of these. And I'm just making them out of scraps that I had left over. So I got one done and it looks great. I'm very happy with it. And then I got the second one on the needles and I was happily knitting along. And this is how much I've got left of this color. And I'll go this way. Go this way. As you can see, I'm not gonna have enough. So my dilemma is, what do I do? Do I start the yellow? Let's do it this way. <laughs> do I start the yellow sooner? Or do I, this is what I have to work with, is these little balls here. I'm sort of thinking, I mean, it's, it's, these are for me, so it doesn't really matter if they're matchy-matchy, although I'm kind of um, a stickler for matchy-matchy, but uh, whatever. They're smorgasbord, so I guess all bets are off. I was thinking of actually putting a little, it's not going to be very much of this in there and then start the yellow. I kind of don't know that I would really like to have the yellow go up higher on these ones. So I don't know. I'll see what I do, but they're really cute socks. They're made out of um, sport, weight, sport weight yarn. This They're not um, fingering yarn. They're quite heavy and thick. So that's my smorgasbord socks. And as soon as I decide what I'm gonna do, I will have these done because they they really knit up very quickly. So those are my, and that was, I think it was my New Year's day or New Year's Eve uh, cast on. And then I've also started um, dishcloths. I, I joined, um, uh, dishcloth stitch along and um, every month oh, hold on just let me get it up here so I can tell you the the real thing um, Garlene from the kitchen sink shop is she she sends out a pattern every month for a dishcloth and every month will be different so at the end of the year you'll have 12 dishcloths and this was the first pattern for January, I hope you can see that. It's called the Icicle Dishcloth. 
and if, as you can see is quite patterned so I cast on just gotta make room here I cast mine on like this this is the only I've had this thing of dishcloth yarn from before and I've cast this on but you can't see the pattern at all so I'm gonna rip this out or I'll just continue making a, a normal dishcloth. And um, I have to go and get some unpatterned yarn, just plain yarn, so that I can do these dishcloths. Because I have a feeling that every month they're going to have a different pattern. I bet you next month, February, is going to have like um, a heart or something. I bet you. So that's um, that was kind of started and stopped as fast as it began because it just wasn't, it, you can't see any pattern in something that's variegated like that. So that was sort of a, a fail on that one, but I will get that. And again, um, with the restrictions that we had for shopping, we couldn't buy any yarn or anything like that. So now we will be able to go to the store and get some yarn, which is wonderful. And what else have I done? And I also started, um, a monthly ornament sale with oh dear I can't remember who it was um, it's hashtag monthly orny sell on Instagram and um, it's there's no rules you don't have to follow anybody's um, patterns you pick a pattern you do an ornament and you do one a month uh, every month until the end of the year and then at the end of the year you've got 12 ornaments so Excuse me a minute. I have finished my January ornament. I haven't put it together, but I have finished stitching it. And this is Rejoicing Reindeer by Blue Ribbon Designs. And it was in the 2020 um, Just Cross Stitch Ornament magazine. So I've got my first one done. Of course, I have to turn it into an ornament, but the stitching is the is the main part of it. So now I'm working on February's. I kind of started early because, um, you know, I have to keep up. It's hard to keep up when you've got all these other things going. So what I'm making is, uh, it's a little snowman. This is only where I've gotten so far. And I will show you a picture of him, if I can find him in here. He will be this one with the broom. So I'm just, I just work on this whenever I'm had enough of that. I, I go and I stitch a little bit on a, on a regular stitching thing. So I'm kind of enjoying that. It takes a break. This is a very easy stitch in that the stitches are very big but it is a lot of color changing and and um yeah it's a lot of outlining because that's not it's cross stitch but it's not cross stitch it's embroidery actually there is a uh, cross stitch and there are uh back stitches satin stitches uh french knots all the old-fashioned embroidery stitches so that one is very time consuming and you know a lot of color changing and things like that so this kind of thing is kind of nice because it's small and you can hold it in your hand and you know where is that i use a great big hoop to work on it and it's cumbersome and anyway then i also started i hope i don't spill my water i also started a little pillow um, it's by Lindy, Lindsay Stitches, and it's Three Snows on a Robin's Tail, Then Spring. It's this one right here. I just thought it was so cute, and I'm going to make it in a pillow, just like it is. And I haven't gotten very far on it either because of that, <laughs> which is okay. I've only gotten that far. And I'm working this on um, 32 count Belfast linen. And I'm just about lost my needle there. So 
that's another reason why I really want to get this done because I have so many other things that I would like to work on before spring. Um, these are small projects like this, but you know, I mean, they do take time and I pretty much, you know, when I'm, if I've stitched on that for three or four hours, my arm is pretty much done, you know, cause it's a lot of this kind of thing, you know, it's, it's, it's a bigger piece. And, uh, I did order, I sent an order in to one, two, three stitch in the United States. And I sent that order in November, I think the middle of November, and I just got it last week. I cannot believe it took so long. And I even contacted them and they said that um, they were finding that orders to Canada were taking three months. I That just kind of blew me away. I mean, I've... I've ordered from all different states in the United States um, to here, to Canada, and I have never had it take more than two weeks, ever. Most times it's in within a week. So there's something dreadfully wrong with, I don't know, maybe with how they're sending it. Um, anyway, I did finally get the order. I almost canceled it because I was getting kind of panicky about it, but I did finally get it. So I ordered a few patterns i ordered this one here it's a lizzie kate i think it's a lizzie yes it is a lizzie kate and i ordered it for um a pattern i'm going to read it to you it says if you live to be 100 i want to live to be 100 minus one day so i never have to live a day without you i'm making that for a wedding gift instead of a wedding sampler um I know it's not very traditional for a wedding sampler, you know, this girl, that girl, are married, then, then, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the couple that I'm doing this for live in the far north. Their, their decorating style is very rustic. And I just don't think that the traditional wedding sampler is going to go over very well with their decor. Whereas I really think this would be really appropriate for them. Um, in how they are and just in their decorating style too so it's this top one here and it comes with another little saying which says sometimes the i don't have my glasses hold on can't read without glasses sometimes the smallest things take up the most room in your heart that's what it says so i got these two patterns lizzie kate and then this is another Lizzie Kate, which um, is just one of the, her little snippets. And it's getting old isn't for sissies. And isn't that the truth? So I'm actually going to put do this one for my bathroom. And then I got a prairie schooler, which I love. That's the 2020 Santa for prairie schooler. And I bought the proper... Um, the proper fabric for that one too it's 18 count putty khaki davos fabric 13 by 18 so um yeah this is going to be nice i can't wait to do that one but i'm going to try not to start that till i got all these other ones done really i'm going to try that so i got for this other one if you live to be a hundred i got i got the call for um flosses for it but um, again, because of their decorating style, I don't know that I'm going to use some of these colors like pinks and baby blue. I really don't think I, I might swap a lot of these colors out because I don't really think it's going to fly with their colors. These darker ones might be okay. So I might change the colors just because it's mostly wording anyway. And then I got a couple of other different fabrics, but what really excited me now, this is, this is the type of person I am. They were offering a grab bag, uh, fabric It's 28 to 40 inch count linen, mini pieces. And I was so excited to do this. So I got this little bag full of little pieces of fabric, um, cross stitch fabric. And this was the most exciting thing about this. I, I could not. This is how I go. So, I mean, I bought all this beautiful, nice fabric. 
and I'm not going to even go into it all, but you know, that didn't excite me. These stupid little pieces did. So, whoops, I've got an avalanche happening in here. So look at all these nice little pieces of, these will be perfect for my ornament cell. Look at this one. Isn't that lovely? And this one. Oh, I'm so excited to use these. This is the one I love. And I actually have an idea for this one already. I've actually found a pattern for this. Um, and I'll tell you about that later. When I started in pink. I'm so excited. There's all, and it's different kinds. There's some Belfast linen. There's some even weave in here. There's even some Ada. So I'm, I'm really excited about this grab bag of scrap fabrics. I mean, that just really blew me up. I couldn't believe it. So this is, um, I'm going to use all of these on ornaments on that, my monthly ornament cell. I just have to figure out what's going on where. So that was my little bit of haul. I do need to put another order in for, um, a few more things, but I'm really kind of hesitant now to order from 123 Stitch. I don't have anything against them, but it's just, I don't feel like waiting three months for uh, a shipment. I think that's like way over the top. So I'm gonna try and source a company in Canada. And um, I know it's gonna cost me a lot more money for the product, but I don't think I'm gonna have the headaches for shipping like I have had with 123 Stitch. So, what else? Um, I don't have a whole lot else to say, really. Um, it's very cold here. I think it was uh, minus 28 Celsius or something this morning. We have had very little really cold weather like that this winter, which is kind of un unusual. Mostly, uh, I mean, usually the whole month of January is like that, but we've had a lot of warmer temperatures and we've had rain lots of rain which is not normal for us at all and not good either because our nights are not warm by any means so if it's warm during the day and it rains and then it freezes at night we've had ice 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 and very treacherous to walk and drive so um in a lot of ways i kind of prefer this cold this is what we know how to deal with this is what we're used to and um, life goes on I mean we're used to this kind of cold weather and when we have cold cold weather the skies are blue the sun's out you know so it's it's much more pleasant than the dreary cloudy rainy we, we don't like that kind of stuff here so it is cold out there and um, I'm gonna have to put on my winter duds pretty soon and go out and feed my birds outside because they really, the birds really do depend on uh, being fed when it's this cold. And we had some snow, so any any food that they did have is covered up, so. And the birds here, they, I fill up the feeders and they get on them and they rock them and put all the stuff down on the ground and then they eat it off the ground. I don't know, I guess I should just throw it on the ground, really. Why, why put it in the feeders, but that's the way it is. So I don't think I have anything else. Um, I think I covered everything that I meant to. Yeah, just like that, boom. And we're only at 23 minutes, that's good. So I think I will say goodbye and um, everybody please stay well. Keep your hands busy, keep doing what you love to do and hopefully we'll be through all of this pandemic stuff before we know it. If we keep busy, the time goes faster and it'll be before we know it. At least that happens for me. So if you are interested in having a closer look at that, um, go back one video. I did a tour of it and I'm going to do another one when I've finished it. I'll do a real close up of it. Um, but hopefully that won't be quite yet. I have to get some backing material for it and stuff. So take care, everybody, and um, stay well, stay happy, stay busy, and I'll see you in February. Bye for now.